Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. In the new year, I'm starting a new build. It's going to be a, quite a large feature, and one I'm very excited about. It is going to be a U-shaped paludarium, and it's going to go around the pillar. Now, I mean large in the sense that from one end of the U all the way down and all the way back up the other side, it is going to be roughly eight or nine linear feet, which is uh, a lot of space. And I've been given an awful lot of freedom as to what's going to happen inside that. So there's going to be all sorts of interesting things as this goes along. Uh, but one of the things that they mentioned that they would like to see is a meandering river. And this is going to be something that's going to go along uh, one of the arms of the U. So this is going to be uh, somewhere between a two and three foot uh, meandering river. And it is obviously going to have to be uh, slightly above uh, whatever the final uh, water uh, level in this is going to be and then obviously it's going to drip down back into it. Now that means there is an awful lot of free space underneath this. Uh, wasted space if I don't use it for this which is going to be a filtration system. So I decided to go with underground filter but because the water is going to be sucked up from uh, one end of the filter and then pumped along and goes down the river and hits it back in the paludarium. All the draw is from one end. So that means if I did the standard underground filter uh, method for making these things, I'm going to end up with a fair amount of mulm buildup at the far end because this filter is uh, just under 30 inches in length. So that's, uh, that's not the best way of doing this because it's going to be in a feature that I don't really want to ever have to take apart because the plants are going to grow. Uh, there's going to be moss on and there's going to be all sorts of stuff and to have to take that apart uh, would ruin that look and it does take time for these things to mature as you can see with the paludarium build I'm doing in the shop and to get that to uh, look nice and then have to take it apart to clean it in a few years uh, is not something I want to do so the spray bar system allows for the water to be drawn more evenly from the entire filtration system and then it also allows, if I need to, I can hook up a slightly more powerful pump and uh, reverse the flow on this and then uh, basically purge any amount of excess of mulm that may eventually accumulate you know, years from now. So that's the reason for this. Now, this is the reason why you're getting to see this pretty much in what I would call a reverse order of a build is a lot of the aspects of whatever this is going to be have not yet been decided and I know roughly what the width of the tank is going to be so when I did the initial uh, spray bar build here as you can see it was just a little over seven inches and that was um, that was too big it was going to take up too much of that space because this has to fit inside that feature so what I've done here is I've cut down the fittings and now it's only about a little under five and a half inches uh, which is much better. Uh, this will definitely fit inside and won't take up too much of the bottom because you have to obviously have stuff between whatever this water feature is going to be uh, down in the water itself and the, the wall of the actual paludarium. And the other thing you'll notice is I have turned the holes. They're not aiming sideways, they're aiming slightly down. So they're going to draw water from mostly down near the bottom of uh, this build. So that also will help uh, prevent mulm from building up. Now I need to fit uh, a grid over this and the grid obviously has to fit over a full fitting. Unfortunately the only hole saw I have is an inch and a half and as you can see it doesn't exactly run true uh, but this is all going to be underneath a filter system so no one's ever going to see it except me <laughs> and well as you can see it doesn't really do well. <laughs> it took quite a while to uh, cut this hole. It's only a quarter inch. It should have gone through quite easily. But the hole saw is pretty much just melting the acrylic. And it, I have to be very careful. If I uh, drill this through in one go, uh, you can see the steam coming off of that. It uh, will end up, as it cools, just pretty much sticking solidly to uh, the hole saw. And it's like, you'll <laughs> never get that out of there. And that little, the, me moving my hand there at that second, that was because that was really quite warm. And uh, what I've done here is I've cleaned it out and I haven't changed anything in the positioning here. I'm just going to run it through one more time and try to get rid of a little bit of that extra melted goo you see on the edge of that. And it cleaned up reasonably well. 
more than enough for uh, this build because again this is a grate that's going to be underneath gravel and like I said no one's ever going to see it. And as you've seen me do when I'm making a number of undergravel filters uh, I've taken that 28 inches roughly of linear length and I cut it into four because this way I can uh, drill them all at once and it cuts down so much on time and this is definitely my favorite way of doing this now. And what I did is I left the large uh, hold plate, uh, the one that's going to be on the end, I put that on top, and that is uh, going to be removed when I finish up the last few holes that are going to be right where that is. Now, I could have left it there and just did it all at once, but I wanted to remove it because I wanted to, well, first off, maintain the pattern, uh, and also I wanted to be able to see the pattern better because uh, the hole does interfere with a bit of the look. Now... This build is being done in reverse order, as you can see. I, I started off with the spray bar, uh, now I'm doing the plate, and on almost all the other builds I've done these, I've started with the actual box, uh, the, the thing that this is all going to fit in, and then where the gravel is going to fill up. I can't do that here because I don't know uh, how deep the water is going to be for this feature. I don't know... Well, pretty much anything at all really about this. I do know it's going to be run by a pump. I have picked the pump out. I know roughly how much water I want this to run through. I know the critical points, but uh, I don't know how much gravel is going to be in this yet. So uh, you're actually not going to get to see a fully functional filter at this point, which is kind of different. It's going to be uh, probably sometime in February, maybe even, uh, well, actually probably February by the time I get to this part of it. It is uh, going to be a bit of a wait for you guys. Uh, sorry about that. But I wanted to get this started partially because I wanted to uh, get a feel for what this feature is going to look like in my mind at least. And uh, the easiest way for me to do that is to start uh, working out the mechanics of things. And that's what I've done here. Uh, you'll get to see the plates in place and under, over the spray bar. And that's... Uh, more beneficial i think for me than it is for you guys but uh like i said it was something i wanted to show you it is an interesting style for underground filters uh fred likes these uh he uses them in his own fish room because uh, it is a, a good way of not having to worry about uh you know too much mold buildup and that sort of thing uh and in this particular case it has to be done this way so i wanted to work all those details out and have this ready to go because like this took um, probably about four or five hours uh, to make. So it was one of those things where I had a bit of time and it, well, like I said, it was something I wanted to get uh, out of the way before I get on to all the other aspects of this build. So there you go, finished up the holes on this. And it's, uh, like I said, this style, uh, I mean, obviously most people don't have a milling machine to do this with. It is better than egg crate. This is the reason why I go to the trouble now for this. Again, because this is going to be underneath an entirely different structure, I didn't want uh, anything to ever go wrong with this. A quarter-inch acrylic will last for much longer than it needs to. And now all I need to do here is raise these up a little bit and make the supports. I didn't want to have the supports on the outside because I want to keep this as narrow as possible. So the spray bar is actually setting the outside of, well, my maximum outside for this. These just come maybe an eighth of an inch uh, thicker, and that way this will just all slide down into that box. I had thought about making a temporary box for this, and actually I still may end up getting to that point if I have enough uh, spare materials for this. Uh, the reason being is uh, that way I can put it in one of my big seven foot tanks and get this started. That way when a uh, build actually gets to the point where it needs the filtration system, uh, the gravel already have you know a culture of bacteria on it, and even though it's gonna get thoroughly disturbed uh, when I you know take this all apart and transport it, uh, it might give it a little bit of a heads up on or an advantage when it comes to uh, getting this tank up and going. Uh, but I'm gonna have to give that some thought. I'm not entirely sure. It is a fair amount of acrylic, and I don't really want to you know, have it go to waste. So there you go, this is what this looks like. And unfortunately, this is as far as I'm gonna to get today because again, the box is uh, something that's gonna be a bit up in the air, but we'll see how that goes. 
And as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. This is going to be a very interesting build coming up in January. And it'll probably have a, a number of weekly updates until I get this thing up and running. So thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video. And bye for now.